Well, the Feminist Institute is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to collecting, digitizing, and sharing the rich history of feminist art, humanities, politics, business, and making our archive globally accessible for free. Hi, my name is Kathy Landy and I'm president of the Feminist Institute. The Feminist Institute welcomes artist and activist Judith Bernstein to a new interview series titled Alive in the Archive, exploring the role of personal archiving in feminist activism. Now, more than ever, we as women must take control of how, when, and where our cultural contributions are documented. Thank you, Judith, for joining us today to talk about your experience in your archive. Welcome. Good. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Do you see personal archiving as a feminist act? You know, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't know if it's a feminist act or not, but it's a great thing that the feminists have are, have started archiving work of women artists that have not been in the canon and have also there's a lot of there's an enorm enormous amount of women who are here and are who have gone that we need we need to have that history recorded so that i think it's really important now i know that the feminists have stepped right in and they have um done what they had to do so therefore uh, they have an they have an archive therefore that people who are writing articles people who are documenting work people who are um, going historically and writing books, they can come to these these archives and check out the work of the women that they don't have access to. So I think it's a great thing. Yeah. They filled a void that was absolutely necessary. Yeah. So at some point, I mean, how which which pieces would you consider letting go from your collection to an archive that potentially could host all of that? Right. Um, you'd you had sorted everything out right. by. Um, type um, essentially would all those whole collections be released or or archived and and would um would that be something of interest to you? Well, I definitely I definitely think that it's very important to have an archive separate from your own place. I think that probably and I haven't really thought about it that much. I know that you guys have an archive which I'm also of course sympathetic to, and also Rutgers and Harvard and uh, the Getty. So the, I think that first I have to, NYU, I have to have an archive definitely in New York. I have to have an archive probably with the Getty. I have to have an archive uh, perhaps with Harvard. I haven't really explored all that because at this point, my assistants are archivaling um, work that has never been photographed that, that I, that See, for a long period of time, for 25 years, I did not show. So I did enormous amount of work within that period of time. And that work, a lot of that work was not archival. I have word pieces. I have screw drawings. I have so much stuff, by the way, series um, that uh, people are not aware of. I have an anti-AIDS AIDS series, AIDS. I have all kinds of things, by the way. So. Uh, menorah series. So there is an awful lot of stuff that my assistants are actually archiving so that I have current that so I have past work archived and also current and I'm also working currently with new series. It's a big job. That's all I have to say. It, and and uh, I'll tell you something. It's a lot of people that this will give a lot of people a lot of work. That's what it is, yes. <laughs> but, I, but I definitely, but I definitely think that there's no question that the archives um, that have to be placed in different places. There's no question about that because you you need uh, you need people going to a public place to be able to look at stuff, to to be able to um, see what's what's been accumulated work that's original work as well as printed work and photographs and slides and all kinds of stuff. So I think it's a very important thing to do. You know, just thinking about everything that's in your loft um, and all of the um, the items that we documented with the 360 experience, yes, um, yes. What, what do you think are the most prized items in your collection and why? And, and maybe some there's some ephemera around there from your childhood and why would you 
Why did you keep those items? Well, I, I, I'll tell you frankly, I have a hell of a lot of stuff that's in boxes. And I'll tell you, I'm sorry that I threw out some things, by the way. I even did throw out some things, I have to say. There was a time when I threw out 2,000 books because I realized that I either have a library or I, I have an art studio and an art career. So I had to go with the art career. But nevertheless, um, I, ha I, I have a lot of things that have meaning to me. So each time I have something, there's a story behind it. So for me, it's important. And I never know if I'm going to go back to it. The problem with being a hoarder is that many times you say, well, if I do a series, I'll need, I'll need 15 of them. I'll need 50 of these. So before you know it, you have piles of stuff. And that sometimes when you throw things out, you have to throw out a whole, a whole, a lot of pieces. Sometimes I've made mistakes, but on the whole, I've, I've kept the stuff, which has been great. Judith, I, we cannot thank you enough for, for coming to join us in this conversation. Um, the ex, I'm thinking about all of your exhibition titles and thinking about the title of the exhibition of your life. Um, your work has been called Irrepentant and your voice Irrepressible. So I'd like to add to that with one of your most favorite used words, fabulous. <laughs> Well, you know something, I love fabulous, 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 fabulous. Thank you so much, Kathy Landy. <laughs>